It's been a strange day in the hockey world, hasn't it? Let's talk Islanders versus Panthers playoff series preview. Now, before we get started, I just want to ask you to please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, which will alert you when my next video comes out, which will be about the Canucks versus the Wild. Now, I'm now five videos in, uh, and I'll put up a link to the last uh, four that I shot um, somewhere over the next couple minutes up top there. So you can click on them at your leisure, but of course, you can just as easily find them in my playlist. Now, before we jump um, on the, uh, the jet engine here, I just wanted to mention some of the news today that came out. Um, a lot of the, there were some Tampa Bay uh, players and staff um, that were tested positive, um, asymptomatic anyways, for COVID-19. They also shut down their training facilities because of that. Not to mention, there was a high-profile Leaf player um, and uh, I want to say about seven Arizona Coyotes who um, are also asymptomatic with COVID-19. And... Uh, are the playoffs going to happen at all? I don't know. This is a big setback. Now, there's still time you know for them to quarantine I, I don't think I think I, I don't quote me on this but I, I think most of them are okay quarantining themselves at least the player wise uh, yeah so fingers crossed hopefully hockey it's another video whether it's gonna even happen at all but um, I'll do a video on that later perhaps and then there's the other thing which kind of irked me now NHL doesn't release names when it comes to Who's caught um, COVID-19? They respect the players' privacy and the team's privacy. And there was a particular pl uh, reporter in Toronto, my hometown, who blurted out his name. And I'm not going to mention it, but uh, he's getting a lot of hate right now on social, social media. And when it comes to me and how I feel about it, shame on you. Shame. Anyway, let's talk about uh, Florida... Uh, Panthers and the Islanders. Now, they faced each other three times during the regular season, and the Islanders took all of those games. Some food for thought there. Now, um, New York finished sixth in the Metro. Um, they were seated seventh, and they finished with 80 points, where Florida uh, finished fourth in the Atlantic. Um, they were seated 10th, and um, they finished with 78 points. Let's talk about some team stats, starting with the special teams. The power play for the New York Islanders is 24th in the league. Maybe that improves a little bit with Pajot, but they're still missing a sniper. Um, Florida is 10th, which is good, but last year it was like 2nd or 3rd. Hmm. Um, penalty kill-wise, uh, um, New York is 15th, but they should get better. More on that uh, in a bit. And Florida's 20th. Not Terrible, but they're treading on that gray area, aren't they? Um, neither of these teams really take too many penalties. More so Florida than New York. Um, Florida seems to be half decent at drawing them as well. A little shout out to Bob Ross there. Goals four. Uh, New York's uh, 24th in the league. Uh, Florida's sixth. Goals against. The Islanders are sixth. And uh, the Panthers are 27th. See a little flip-flop? You see a trend happening? Uh, now, uh, in terms of face-off, win percentage, um, the Islanders are 18th in the league. Uh, the Panthers are 13th. And a um, little side note here, Barkov, Pajot, and Nelson, Brock Nelson, um, are all in the top 16 when it comes to this category uh, in the NHL, that is. Now, 20-plus um, uh, goal scores. Um, the New York Islanders have two, but they also have uh, one with 19, one player with 19, and one with 18. The Panthers um, have five 20-plus uh, goal scores, and they also have one player with 19. I think that's Brett Connolly. Now, 50-plus point players. Um, New York's got two. The Islanders have three. And some keynotes here about each team, starting with uh, the Islanders, Pajot and Sezikis. Um, are tied for second in the NHL in shorthanded goals, and Peugeot is second, and Sezik is third for um, shorthanded points. Uh, and then lastly here, um, the Islanders lead the NHL in hits per game. Florida's in 27th. Another opposite statistic. Um, Matt, Mar Matt Martin, of course, um, is the leader 
uh, from that Islander team. He's fifth overall in the NHL in hits. Now, from the Florida side of things, um, Hubert, Huberto is fifth um, in the NHL in power play points, and they have four players um, that are in the top 34 rankings of the NHL um, in terms of uh, those points as well. Um, all those guys are off of the first power play unit for um, for the Panthers, and Dadanov, who's on the first power play for on the first power play unit, but not part of that list. Surprisingly enough, uh, also sits tied for seventh in the league in power play goals. Um, and lastly, here, uh, not to kick any sand in the Islander fans' faces, but <laughs> uh, New York. Um, don't even have one player in the top 100 in the power play point list in the NHL. Barzal is the closest in the 114th spot. Now, um, let's break these uh, some stats down positionally, uh, starting with goaltenders. And beginning with um, the Islanders goalie, Seymour Varlamov, who's in his first year for them. He's 32, by the way, just had a birthday in April, 6'2", 205 pounds. And in 45 games this year, he had a 914 save percentage. Uh, not too shabby at all. He was in 909 last year uh, with Colorado in 49 games. And when it comes to his playoffs uh, numbers, he's only played 26 playoff games, and that was in three separate appearances uh, over 10 seasons, and he averaged a 913 uh, save percentage. Good. That's good. Um, now, his... Uh, Backup, or his 1B, is Thomas Grice, of course, 34. He'll be 35 in January. 6'2", 232 pounds. And in 31 games um, for New York, he had a 913 save percentage. Very similar numbers, um, and not bad either. Uh, he had a 927 last year, though, but I think that was the outlier. Um, Grice seems to teeter-totter between... Uh, good stats during his career in any case. Now, in terms of the playoffs, he's played 13 playoff games... Sort of. Um, over three separate appearances. Um, and that's over 11 seasons. And he has an 884 save percentage. And I'm squinting because there's a big asterisk here. Uh, because last season, he only played um, a period and a half of playoff hockey. But he wasn't good in that period and a half and had an 800 save percentage. Remember, he came and bailed out uh, Leonard in the uh, second period of, of the fourth game when they were getting swept by Carolina. Uh, a lot of fans and a lot of people thought he should have started the third game after the second loss. Um, but in any case, um, most of his playoff appearances come from 11 games uh, in the 2015-16 season um, with the Islanders in which he had a 9-2-3 save percentage. So, yeah, some food for thought there. Now, moving on to the Panthers, starting with uh, Senor Bob, uh, Mr. Sergei Bobrovsky, uh, 31. He'll be 32 in September, 6'2", 187 pounds in his first season with Florida in 50 games. Couldn't save a beach ball. 900 save percentage. Ouch. Yeah, last season with Columbus, he had a 913. But he was a 925 in the playoffs last season, right? So there's that, but um, he's, he's, he's played 33 playoff games throughout his career, more than any of the Islander goalies, and that's over six different appearances uh, over nine seasons, and he's got an 869 save percentage as an average, and there is no asterisk here. <laughs> Last season was the outlier for him in terms of uh, playing well in the playoffs because his numbers aren't... They're bad. They're, yeah, 900, 882, 908, 722, 877. Need I say more? Yeah. So uh, we'll talk more about that in a second. Let's talk about defense, um, starting with uh, the goal leaders um, with the Islanders' defense. Uh, they've got, well, they've got 28 goals from their D. Um, the Florida Panthers have got 42. Over, tw is that 24 goals more? Wow. Um, now, uh, Pollock has the most goals on D for the Islanders with 10. Uh, for Florida, it's uh, Pissick. I think that's how you say it. He's got nine, although he also plays right wing, so I don't know where he scored those goals. Matheson has eight. Uh, now, point-wise, um, the, the uh, Islander uh, defense has 127 
uh, points. Um, the uh, Panthers have 174. Pollock leads the Islanders with 35. Yandel for the Panthers with 45. Uh, now, I just wanted to touch on plus minus here real quick. Um, Pollock and Mayfield uh, lead the defense with a plus 8. Boychek is a minus 11. For the Panthers, Ekblad has a plus 12. He really improved this year. Strawman has the worst with a minus 6, surprisingly. I thought I expected better out of him. And although these guys play on different pairings, they're both on the second penalty kill unit. Yeah. Now, the forward group, um, again, starting with goals. Uh, the Islanders' um, offense has 161 goals. Uh, the Panthers uh, has 186. That's 25 more. Point-wise, um, New York has 382 from their forwards. Um, and uh, Florida has 445. That's a over a 60-point difference. Wow. Barzell has the most for the Islanders with 60. Huberto um, for the Panthers with 78. And when it comes to the plus-minus categories, um, Sezikis leads the way with the Islanders for only a plus-2. Kind of surprising there. And then Bailey's a minus-11. Beauvillier's a... No, he's a minus-12. Excuse me, even worse. Beauvillier's a minus-11. And these guys play on separate lines, thank God. Uh, I want to say the second and third line. And they always have to play defensively aware um, players with them because for this reason, uh, which will be interesting when it comes to what they do with Broussard. More on that in a second. Um, Huberto is the best. Uh, he's a plus five uh, with the Panthers. Vetrano is the worst with a minus eight. But then there's also like Hoffman, who's a minus five. And Dadanov was a minus seven. Those two players on the first power play unit, by the way. Boyle is also not great in that category. Um, Quensville's got to do something about these guys and their defensive play. Now, let's talk about uh, who has the edge in each of these categories. The goaltending, it's kind of even. You know, I, I kind of want to give it to the Islanders, but Bob has more experience. And he did play well in last year's playoffs. Yeah, that's a little bit of a toss-up there. Defense, I give a slight edge to Florida, mainly because of the defense, um, the offense from their defense. Um, but, of course, the Islanders um, are better defensively in all aspects of the game. Uh, Forward-wise, I give a slight edge here again to to Florida. It, it's Talent-wise, it's just there, right? Um, special teams, same sort of thing. Uh, Florida gets the slight edge... Uh, because of their power play, but uh, the penalty kill should be improving for New York. Coach, coaching, uh, I got to give a little bit of an edge here to Trotz. I mean, he, I mean, Quenville hasn't been in the playoffs in a couple seasons now, mostly because he hasn't been working. But Trotz, he just won the cup, right? And, and then he turned over this team. The Islanders in his first season from being one of the worst defensively to one of the best. And I, I, Quenville hasn't really sort of done the same thing with Florida. He's improved them, but I, I, it's, it's not as a drastic change. So, anywho, um, you can argue with me that in the comments section. Let's talk about keys to the series here, starting on the New York side of things. Beginning with Sezikis and Pellick, they're back in. That's important because Sezikis is a fourth line center, and you're like, yeah, what, so what, who cares? That's like one of the best fourth lines in the league. They probably play more than most others. Um, and then there's Pellick, who's um, on their first pairing on uh, defenseman, um, and both of those players are on the first penalty kill, kill unit, which is why I think it will uh, drastically improve. Um, then, secondly here, it's all about Verlamov and Grice. Can they play well in the playoffs? Um, again, it, it seems like a coin toss there, isn't it? Uh, who starts? I, I would assume it's it's Varlamov. Uh, next, who plays second line left wing? Because Andrew Ladd cannot be in this spot. Uh, with Sezikis back, maybe Broussard gets bumped up there. Um, we'll see. Uh, again, um, Islander fans, I'd like to hear your insight on that. Uh, next, the bottom nine need to score. The bottom nine. <laughs> uh, I don't think I need to say much more on that. Uh, next, the, the power play can't suck every shift. 
the refs put their their whistles away, I know, but when they do get an opportunity, they just can't consistently uh, waste it there. And lastly, um, this should be an obvious one. They've got to wear out their defense, uh, Florida's defense, with their heavy game. They're not number one in the league in hits for nothing. So uh, they have to take that to their advantage. Now, on the Florida side of things, um, number one is Bobrovsky, right? It has to be. He, he's got to flip the switch there or they're toast right off the bat. Drieger is, I, 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 who knows? Do you know? I don't know. Um, <laughs> next, uh, they got, Florida have to, I know they've cut down on trading chances, but still it's an issue especially when it comes to turnovers at their own blue line and then the neutral zone. Um, and then uh, the forwards need to be much more defensively of war aware, especially those three or four of those culprits I named earlier, Vitrano, Hoffman, Dadanov, Boyle. Um, and don't be cavalier on the power play. Don't be cavalier with the power play. Pajot and Sezikis lead or you know are, are league leaders in shorthanded goals you can't just um walk in there and, and and not be you know have your head on a swivel and lastly quinville needs to make these guys accountable in the playoffs if some of these uh culprits in the bad part of the uh, plus minus side you know are taking their time skating back to the bench for instance he's got to bench these guys for like a period or, or, or more Send a message, you know, get this team on the same page. Anywho, um, as always, I would love to hear what you have to say about this in the comment section down below, especially you Panther and Islander fans. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Obviously, that's it and that's all. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, be kind to each other out there. Thanks again and I'll see you soon.